Welcome back, so today we are flying out the Key 83 and you guys have been requesting this thing for quite a while now so I thought why not finally cover it. Today we are going to be looking at something slightly different. We are not going to be using the plane to its complete strength and its optimal playstyle. Today we are going to be looking at something a little bit more Something you can apply to basically every vehicle. The Key 83 is a very good vehicle. However, in the Aero B meta, its strengths don't always translate that well. So, you have to play it a little bit less than ideal. This also ties in into the learning the vehicle. The kind of thingy that I sometimes sprinkle in here and there. This is one of those times. Flying a vehicle just as aggressively as you can. Getting yourself into sticky situations. And making sure that you understand what this thing can do and understand what this thing can't do is very important to playing a plane optimally if you actually need to one time. If you never get in a spot where you almost die or you make a very big mistake, if you never made that mistake, you will not know how the plane will behave in that kind of scenario. So if an enemy ever forces you to make such a mistake or forces your hand into two maneuvers and you haven't used either, it becomes a guessing game. I recommend to get through this phase as you are still stuck. Two reasons for this, of course some planes are an exception, but in general the performance is going to be much worse when you're stuck. So you are still going to get a little bit of a feel for the vehicle, you can still understand what the plane can and can't do. It won't be as intricate as it will be if you are spaded and you do it in a closed environment. But if you are stuck, you need to get XP, RP or whatever you want to call it. So you are not stuck anymore. You want to get through that as fast as possible. And playing it to its strengths is probably not going to get you anywhere. Because if you are stuck, you are probably you probably don't have that many strengths to begin with. So you kind of just throw it in. You start dogfighting people. Kind of what I'm doing right here. I'm not trying to run away from people. I'm not trying to run away from fights. I'm simply just diving on people. And trying to get as many fights as possible. And trying to get as many kills as quickly as possible. Because the longer the game goes on, most of the time at least, the bigger your disadvantage becomes when you are stuck. Because you are just eventually going to run out of energy. And especially for props. Even if I was stuck, this fight would have gone almost identical. The turn time doesn't increase that much in this downward motion. That's the biggest change in performance you are going to find is going to be the engine. And in the maneuvers that I'm doing right here, the engines don't play that much of a role. So I'm getting a very good feel right here for how maneuverable it is, where I can gauge this thing or where I can rank it in like the maneuver scale that I have in my head. And then I think to myself, what can I do and what can't I do? That the Jack 15 would have absolutely eaten my ass and the J21 overshoots and simply fly straight and place the ultimate price for it. Wingtip gone, just shoot a few more rounds and down goes the J21. The J21 is of course not a very good vehicle. And the fact that he didn't react to me at all is definitely not helping his case. But the J21 is simply just a bit of a mid-mobile. But you can tell that the way I'm flying right now is just kind of like a chicken with his head cut off. I'm just looking at the closest people. I'm just trying to turn as much as possible. I'm trying to see how sustained I can fight in this thing. And how many people I can take down with me. At this point of time, when I was flying this thing, I didn't have many games. So I'm really just trying to test the waters, trying to see what I can and can't do. And that's why this footage is kind of old. If you're wondering why the gun sounds so differently, that is why. Because I cannot go back to a plane that I already know how it behaves. And then show you that I'm trying to learn how the plane behaves. Because I already know that. This was my first game since I was basically completely spaded. So I will now turn up the aggressiveness a little bit so I can understand the vehicle better. Because now I have all the performance that I need. So now if I can't get out of a situation, now I'm trying to fine tune my ideas that I have about the vehicle. Sure it's decently removable, it climbs amazingly well. But you also have to keep in mind that the lockup is pretty bad. The turn rate itself isn't that great and you really just want to make sure that your turn rate comes from the power that your engines have. Do be careful because the engines overheat well the overheat is absolutely wild so you really want to make sure you keep an eye on those engine temps and you don't cook them because if you need those engines in a very important moment and you can't web this thing basically becomes dead in the water luckily you do have an air spawn on already one of the best climbing props in the entire game so you are going to be above everyone and you can cool off the engines if you are that high and for the first kill of this game I mean this guy is just completely oblivious 
So we break off and we go back into a little bit of a climb. We have P51H coming in and those are very, very dangerous. They outrun us, they outturn us, they don't outclimb us. But keep in mind the P51H climbs insanely well. 50 kills have good range and other than climb rate he outperforms us in every metric so we want to be really careful that we don't dive on him overshoot and get him planted on r6 because at that point our climb rate means absolutely nothing i see that the p51 is kind of inching towards the kika i was setting up for him to pitch up into me but he does notice us and he breaks off and then we have an su 11 on our right jets are kind of the kryptonite of this thing sure we can just climb away from all of them but we're not going to get anyone killed like that. And if you get into a dogfight with a jet. I'm not going to say you are going to be losing. But it's not going to be a 1-2 turn and an instant win. It's going to take you some time. And if he breaks off at any point in time. Then he is simply just going to be outrunning you. The A21 simply flies underneath us. I dive on him but he gets taken down by the Kika. So I just go, go away again and look for the next target. I believe there's an SU-11 at altitude, but at this point it doesn't really matter. It, I can't contest him anyway, so I'd rather just get the people on the deck to die. So that we actually have some room and we actually have some numbers to just win the game naturally without having to carry it. Because in this kind of vehicle, having to carry against jets and F2Gs and P51Hs is a very tough ask. You can do it, but they have to make a lot of mistakes. So I'm taking a look at the F2G on the left because he is going to be also a big problem on the deck. He will climb with us basically and will be much much faster. And I notice the Kika is getting somewhat in range so I lead the guns, squeeze the trigger and I hit like 530 mils. And he gets put to sleep. So we break off. SU-11 goes down. P51H goes down. And now we have an F2G, two F2Gs and an LA-9 on our 6. The A21 over there on the right or left if you look at it from the screen point of view are kind of annoying the f2g is a very dangerous aircraft in this thing we can outclimb it considering they hold their speed much better and are much quicker if they put it into a little bit of a shallow climb they might actually end up catching us and we don't want that to happen so i'm trying to make them go up as steep as possible so i go a little bit to the side i try to cut them over i'm trying to make them use a little bit of their speed to turn after us and it kind of works. I'm not going very steep just yet. Because if I do that right now. They are going to end up catching me. So the second I start outrunning both of them. In this kind of climb. I will start climbing a little bit steeper. And then I will put a lot of distance between us. In the vertical axis. And if they then try to push, pitch up for us. They are dead in the water. And they can't really do much about it. And that's exactly what we want. The thing is there's enough teammates around here. To the point where we don't really have to worry about it. They have to break off. They are forced to go somewhere else. Because if they don't. They are going to get third party by one of my teammates. I see an LA9 below us. He is going to pitch in for the head on. I don't want to have to do anything with that. And I now decide. Do I go for the F2G. Or for the LA9. It depends a little bit on what they do. The F2G has priority. But if the F2G starts diving out. A little bit sooner. If that F2G started to get separation, get speed earlier, I would have probably gone for the LA9. But then the LA9 dove straight to the deck, so I would have gone back to the F2 team. It's a very dynamic process, and you can't really make up a plan. Unless everything goes like you expect it to. If it doesn't, I mean, you just have to kind of touch and feel. It's mostly experience. And of course, there are some things like the most dangerous plane. And if it's for an example a P51H or maybe if someone brought in a biplane or like a, a Heinkel 100, then I don't have to make that choice at all. It depends on the team composition, the numbers as well as their planes. Because if I have to carry and I, I see that it's transitioning into this 1v5 kind of scenario, I will go for the plane that will give me the most amount of trouble if he's paying attention to me. So it just depends. The A21 here is going to try to run a little bit of an energy trap on us. So I'm just going to pitch up for him and kind of shoot. And my engines have the power of the sun. They're also as hot as one. So I just kind of push ahead. Why do I do such a risky thing? He's the last enemy player and I just want to get the game over with. If that was at the start of the match, no chance I would have played it like that. I do not trade in head-ons. Or at least I try not to unless I get my hand forced. In that case, 
I just got impatient. We die for the P51. One of the worst players you can run into. Not even sure how I ran into it. He probably up to it himself. And now we just transition to the next guy, G55. And this is the beauty of climbing straight in, straight over, and just diving on the first guy that you see. Why? It's kind of the same as with the F104s that you do in top tier. Where you just climb over the entire enemy team. And if you are high enough, and if you come from an awkward enough angle, most people will just not even notice that you're there. And that's great. If people aren't aware of you, it's very likely that you're just going to be killing them without any issues. I climb away to get a little bit of separation, make sure that I'm not getting jumped on from the top. And this 190, he looked at me from like 7 to 8 kilometers away. And I could just tell that he was going to come straight for me. And he's allowed to. It's an A8. And he is not going to have... He is not going to have the power to do this. So I'm just going to pitch up over his nose. I'm diving a little bit to create some speed and separation. While he is still climbing, so he is losing speed. His energy will maybe go up a little bit. But his effective speed is going to drop. Now he's going very slow. He's cutting us off and I'm still outrunning him. So I'm going to go into a very shallow climb here. And then once we get enough separation, and once we get enough height, especially, I'm just going to turn right over him. Because he is going not much quicker than we are. But right now he has the nose authority to pitch straight up for this. So I'm playing it a little bit safe. I'm going to go up for a little bit longer. But now he's about to stall out. And I'm just going to slam the elevator. And we are going to turn directly inside of him. And you can tell. He might outturn us, but he doesn't have the energy to complete that pull. And because of that, he is now going to basically stall out underneath us. He didn't let himself stall. He played it a little bit safe, which is what you have to do. And now we get directly on a 6. Now, this is where the issue with this plane lies. If people just dive away from you and go full on defensive, it becomes very hard for you to actually shoot them down. It is possible, but they have to make some mistakes. You are a lot more sluggish than the one-engine fighters. And I'm just not feeling it, so I'm just going to send it. This guy will outturn us at this kind of speed. But I'm just trying to make him lose as much energy as possible while I'm trying to just ride his ass. I'm losing speed. I'm zero throttling. I'm just trying to get on his six. And I will eventually win in this kind of scenario because I have position. And he will run out of energy before he gets to outmaneuver me. But he just dives away again. And now we basically reset the position. I'm still 0% throttling. And the danger with this is if he notices this and he just runs away. And guess what? I can do basically nothing to him. But he's very much occupied and he's trying to win the game by killing all my numbers. So I'm now on this 6. And I am much slower. I would have cut inside of him here because I was going much, much slower. And because he goes for the N1K, I get to just click him out of the air. He then kills the other guy as he is dead himself. And that's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.